Welcome to my classroom. I am Nisli. This video is about how we can use the nearest potential. Uh, we know that ions must move into or out of the cell to change and produce the membrane potentials. So this is called an ion current. To have an ion current or an ion movement into or out of the cell, two conditions must be provided at the same time. First one is that we need to have an ion channel in the membrane because ions are not able to pass through the lipid uh, of part of the membrane. The second is that we need a driving force that's going to push the ions to pass through the channel. The driving force can be of two types. One is electrical. The electrical force for the ions is the membrane potential at that time and the unit of it is millivolt. The second driving force is a chemical force. The, the concentration difference of our main ions, sodium, potassium, calcium and chlorides, the concentration difference of them between the intracellular and extracellular fluid produces a chemical driving force. And the unit of this one is millimolar. So, if we want to find the net driving force, we have to summate these two forces. The electrochemical force will be found. But we have a small problem that we have to solve. Chemical force is in millimolars and electrical force is in millivolts. We, this means that we need to have the same unit for each of them to be able to summate or subtract them. Nice potential becomes important here. So nice potential is a way of converting millimolars into millivolts for the chemical force. So when you see the word Nernst potential, it's not a real potential, it's actually a, an expression of chemical concentration difference. So these two forces have to be summated. Let's try to give an example of how we can do it. In our example, the Nernst potential for potassium is 80 minus 80 millivolts and the membrane potential at that moment is minus 70 millivolt. I make use of four steps in finding out the net driving force or the electrochemical force. So step one is what is the direction of electrical force? The electrical force is the membrane potential and it is minus 70. We know that we always refer to the inner side of the membrane. So inside of the membrane is 70 millivolt more negative compared to the outside. Potassium has positive charge. So the negative charges inside the membrane is going to pull potassium inward. The direction of the electrical force is toward the inside of the membrane. What is the the next step is amplitude of it. What is the amplitude of it? It is 70 millivolts. Step number three is what is the direction of chemical force? We know that the concentration of potassium is high inside the cell and it is low outside the cell. So the chemical force is going to push potassium out of the cell but what for step four is what will be the amplitude of it? The amplitude of it is 80 millivolts, which is the nearest potential. So the second force is pushing potassium out of the cell. Now we have a 70 millivolt force pushing potassium in and an 80 millivolt force pushing potassium out. What is the net force? Net force is... 10, 10 millivolts of electrochemical force pushing potassium, pushing potassium out of the cell. This is our net driving force. So the result is that we are going to have a potassium efflux. The same thing can be expressed in biophysics by Ohm law. What is Ohm law? It says that the voltage difference is going to produce an 
is going to produce an electrical current through a resistance. The same thing can be applied to our ion channels. We can say that an ion current can be produced by an electrochemical driving force through the channels that have a permeability or conductance to the ions. So the conductance here is the reciprocal of resistance. If we have more ion channels open, the conductance is going to be bigger. If we have a bigger electrochemical force, these two will come together to produce a bigger ionic current. How do we find the electrochemical force, V? We find the difference between Vm, the the membrane potential and E of the ion, the nearest potential of, an, of our ion that we are trying to understand. So, in this video I tried to explain by an example how we are going to use the nearest potential. Thank you for watching. There's another video about how the nearest potential can be calculated. Thank you for watching.